Hello, I wanted to talk to you about design. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about how to draw your own design, um, how to work with the design once you get it printed out, um, so you can kind of start the next step on the process. Um, first off, with uh, drawing your own design, you'd have to ask me for a grid paper, um, and I'll give you um, something that's already kind of pre-cut. Um, this is a seven by seven inch, and this is a six by eight inch. Um, and depending on what you want to do, you'd kind of grab that for me. What's really nice about using uh, graph paper is that you can start deciding, you know, where things line up and try to make them as perfect as possible. Because the better that your drawing is, the better chance that you have at actually having a piece that um, is finished. Um, it'll have a piece that have less problems um, in there and, and everything else. It's also really nice that if you have a design that's symmetrical, you know, where it's kind of the same on both sides, <coughs> you can start, you know, counting, you know, like one, two, three, and, and then you make sure you have like eight squares on this side, eight squares on this side, you know, it's perfectly lined up. And it just makes your piece so much better when you take the time to do something like that. So I have this piece that I sketched out. Um, I like to have, you know, these borders around there. So I have a two, um, two square border around the entire thing that, that I'll be incorporating you know with it so this is kind of set for that next step and that next step would for me to count all of my squares you know make sure i'm in that you know 15 20 um 25 range on that this is definitely going to be something that's going to be more pieces um but i know that and i'm willing to put the time into um, working outside of class time to get this done because i really want to because i really want to do it um I don't think I could simplify anything else that's already on here. Um, so I think I'm, I think I'm going to run with it. Um, so what I would start doing is I would start, I would start numbering them. Um, and I would actually erase, this would not be a shape. I would erase one of these out. So, but I would say like, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, and so on and so forth. The second thing you wanna do is you wanna think about your direction lines that are in your glass. So remember, when you when you pick up a piece of glass, um, if it is a true uh, um, cathedral or a true opalescent where it's just flat, then it doesn't matter. But you, you don't know that um, until you actually get into it because things change. Because sometimes we might not have enough of a glass, sometimes you might not have the color you want and you gotta switch to something different or whatever. Um, so you gotta put these direction lines in. So. The longer the shape is, that's the way you want your direction line. So obviously this is a long shape. So I know that I wanna have my direction lines like that. So I put those arrows in. This one, oh, this one I wanna go um, like this. Make sure that doesn't look like a one. Um, this one would be like this. This one would be like this. Okay, now like number six, it's gonna be a curve, um, but it's really long, you know, so again, I'm gonna do something like this. Um, and a lot of these branches are gonna be pretty obvious because they're just kind of longer, thinner ones. Now five and seven, this is where I'm starting to think of like, well, what do I wanna do with this? I know I wanna keep these clear. Um, hopefully you notice that this is a tree. Um, I wanna keep these clear because I saw something online that I liked and I want to, and it's more square-like. I mean, this is a little bit longer this way, but it's also a horizon. Um, so I actually want to have these, if there is a grain on here, of which I'm hoping I don't have to have one, I'm hoping that all of these don't have grain. So I'm really going to look for that, that clear uh, cathedral glass for this. Um, and, but if I did, um, I think on all of these, because it's, it's sky, I'm probably going to, I'm going to turn this around. I'm probably going to have every one of these like this because I, I want the sky to be like that. Um, so five, six, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I would label all the rest of these and, and then I have this all up. Once this is done, you need to give it back to me so I can go make a copy of this. Um, so you have one copy that's going to be like your answer key in terms of how to put it together. And then you'll have the other copy that you'll end up cutting out. Okay, so that's how you do those. Here's an example of one. It's a tree. Um, some stuff back here, real simple um, kind of thing. You might even want to break it up a little bit more um, that she can go ahead and, and start, you know, labeling this one. So again, one, two, three, four, you know, and so on and so forth. This is a long shape here. So arrows, 
arrow. Now, because this was taller, because this is a continuation from here to here, because it's, it's part of the same field, you definitely want to have all of those. So even though this is taller, you want to go contrary to that. Now, this artist decided to have, you know, that look. You know, I think it might look, I think it might look better. Well, I don't know. Actually, actually, I might agree with them. So I'm going to change my mind on that. I think they're right. Because it's, it's an upward hill. These, I think, should go that way because it's more ground. This is elevating. So I, I kind of would agree with that. Now, this line would actually end back here. So this one could go either way. So I'm actually going to leave that one, but I would agree with that one. You know, and same thing here. A lot of these are, are straight up and down. Um, they went a different direction. Actually, they kind of kind of did this. I'm going to accent that a little bit more because you're trying to really push that direction of that branch. You know, and this one, again, is um, <laughs> maybe you don't want to have any direction lines on here, but if you had to have a direction line on there, because um, you'll still have your answer keys, so you can kind of look back at it. <clears throat> maybe I would do that. So one, two, three, four, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So again, label all of them, get that. Turn that into me and you're good. Um, let's look at this piece. Um, so this one, they found one that did not have a background. Um, they have all this on here. It's not super fuzzy. Um, so we should be, we should be kind of good to go with, with this one. And, but she has to come up with her, her, her outside lines. So I'm not going to go over except for like one, two, three. So do that. But then this line that I have on the outside, not, not this one, but this one is where you have to go in and you have to give your, your background. So anywhere there's a point, you have to break that up. So I like to try to continue lines the best that I can. So I'm actually going to draw that and draw like that, you know, and this one could be attached there. Um, this one I would, you could either, yeah, let's just do this. I think that's cuttable, that's cuttable, that's cuttable, that's cuttable. This is not. That's cuttable. This gets a little hard right here. This one gets a little hard right there. So that's how I would probably break that space up. Um, but like we talk about in class, there are many ways of doing it. Okay, so you just kind of have to figure it out. Um, I do have glass drops. Um, so if you have one, you could set that down on here and draw that shape out because that would change, you know, these shapes a tad bit, but you could use a glass drop right there. Um, and I do have uh, glass paint, so if you want to draw a little eyeball somewhere, um, you can. But again, you would go through and you would decide, you know, where stuff is at. Now, typically with something like this, I would highly recommend using clear glass, you know, like clear, transparent, no color whatsoever, because this is the project. This is the part that you want people to notice. Um, we still square everything in, so I would use something really clear for this whole background. Um, so it's just something to kind of consider as you're kind of working with it. Um, now, if you have a piece, and I don't have an example to show you, um, but I don't know, let's just take this one. Um, but it's not as bad. Sometimes when you blow it up, it gets awfully fuzzy, um, and or your lines are like super thick. Um, it's almost good to take the, um, put your have your light table here. Um, this goes down. Scrap piece of paper goes over top of it. Redraw your line here and draw this inside of it. Um, and then work off of your, your copy because it's a real fine line. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of manipulate things a little bit, clean it up, get it exactly how you want it. Because sometimes when you print these off, these, these lines can get awfully thick, you know, cause this, even this is a little on the fuzzy side. Um, and even like with this line right here, you know, this is the, this is the thickness of that line and it's just awfully thick. So sometimes you even want to, when you get, when you get this one back, you almost want to trace it out real quick and, and then rework it so you have your design. So um, other than that, just let me know if you have any questions and good luck on this part of the project.